What's going on, everybody? Welcome into my 2023 NBA Draft Combine Preview. Today, I'm going to be talking about players who I'm very interested to see in terms of their measurements, standing reach, height, wingspan, etc., as well as some guys that I'll be watching in combine scrimmages, as well as some guys who I'm curious to see the athletic testing numbers on. Tomorrow, I will have a prospect watch video. Hopefully, you're enjoying the draft content as we are in the lead up until the draft lottery, which is on Tuesday, May 16th. We'll have a live stream going live probably 30 minutes before it starts at 4.30. We'll see, but we'll have a live stream with graphics covering the NBA Draft Lottery, giving our live raw reaction to whatever goes down on Tuesday. So hopefully you can join us. That'll be right here on the main channel. Before then, on Monday, we'll have a live stream on Blazers Uprise Live, previewing a lot of draft stuff. So hopefully you're able to catch us on our second channel as well. There's a link to the description box below if you're not yet subscribed over there. Also, leave a like on this video. It helps me out, and I greatly appreciate it. And with that being said, let's start talking some draft names. As far as measurements, I'm going to start at the top of the draft. I'm very interested to see what Brandon Miller measures. I think he's close to a legitimate 6'8", but we'll see what he measures without shoes. The Thompson Twins are listed as 6'7". I hope that they're 6'6", 6'7", without shoes, because if they're 6'4", 6'5", and if they don't have a super long wingspan, then it's going to make them undersized at the small forward position, and those two guys are extremely intriguing if they have the size and the length to play the small forward position. So I'm looking for their measurements, and it'll also be interesting to see if their measurements differ at all with them being twins. You got Anthony Black, who is six foot seven he's a wing i'm interested to see if he has the size to play that small forward position he's definitely skinny but he could be an option for the blazers if they don't move up and they don't trade the pick same thing applies to cam whitmore as well as six foot seven then you got taylor Hendricks, who i think could be legitimate as a small ball five man who can space the floor and protect the rim but he is listed at only six foot nine i'll be interested to see where his measurements come in at and then some guys further down the line. Derek Lively is listed at 7 foot 1. I'm interested to see what that comes in at. I think he'll be under 7 feet, but I'm curious to see what his standing reach and wingspan is. That is one of my favorite targets in this draft. I don't think he'll last to the Blazers 23rd pick, but I wouldn't mind the Blazers trading up from 23 to like 18 or 19 to snag him. Colby Jones is another one of my favorite prospects listed as 6'6". Six, six. It'll be interesting to see if he has the size to play the 3 because I think he's a very versatile player on both sides of the floor and can hopefully play three positions and then Leonard Miller is a guy that I really like at six foot ten he has some skill I think he could even play some three but if he's legitimately six foot ten with a long wingspan then maybe he could even play some five as we get into the second round Noah Clowney is an intriguing prospect because he's shown flashes of being able to knock down threes his percentage wasn't super great last year but he's listed at six foot ten He's a decent athlete, fluid. I want to see if he can be a center in the league. I want to see if he has the size for that, because if so, then a 3 and D center in the second round potentially could be a good pickup. Trace Jackson Davis was phenomenal in college last year at Indiana. He's 23 years old, so he's already up there in age, but put up terrific numbers. He's pretty quick, can put the ball on the floor, can finish around the rim. But the problem with him is he doesn't really have a three-point shot, so I think he needs to be six foot nine, at least six foot ten, in order to play some center. I think he might measure under six foot nine. It'll be interesting to see what he ends up as because if he's an undersized power forward, I just don't think his game translates well to the NBA. Deron Holmes is a guy that Eric really likes. He's listed at 6'10. That's another one of those tweener big men between power forward and center. Holmes didn't shoot much at Dayton, but in some pre-draft clips has shown that he can knock down some threes. His form's a little bit weird, but not terrible. So if he doesn't measure in super well, then he'll definitely need to become more of a three-point shooter to play that power forward position compared to being the center. Andre Jackson is an intriguing player in the second round. I'll talk about him more in my prospect watch video, but I think him having the size to play the three could boost his stock. Same thing for Keontae Johnson as well. Final player that I'm really intrigued to see the measurements on is Kobe Brown, a power forward out of Missouri who shot 45% from three last season. He's 250 pounds. I think he needs to be tall enough or long enough to be able to play the power forward position, but he's one of my favorite second round sleepers. I'll talk about him a little bit more in the prospect watch video as well. And honestly, measurements are important for every player. Being able to have the size to be competitive at certain positions or potentially be a little 
little bit more versatile in the NBA will help somebody's stock. Some guys might be six foot five with a seven foot wingspan and a tall standing reach, while other guys might be six foot eight with a short wingspan and might be more undersized to certain positions. So the wingspan matters, the standing reach matters. I take a hard look at both those things. I actually value those two things more than height, but measurements are the number one thing that I take out of the draft combine. And it sounds like everybody's going to measure except for Victor Wenbanyama. In past years, there's been a lot of guys that haven't measured. The NBA has made it mandatory starting next year for every player to measure. And if players can't attend the combine because they're still playing overseas or whatever, they have to measure at a later date. So I love that the NBA has made that change going forward. As far as athletic testing, I'm very curious to see the Thompson twins and how high those two guys can jump. Taylor Hendricks as well, who's going to probably get drafted in the top 10. Dylan Mitchell has a 40-inch vertical. The Blazers brought him in for a workout recently. He's just a guy who's a crazy athlete. But as far as athletic testing, this is the thing I look at the least. It's always interesting to see who has the best testing scores in various athletic testing drills. And I'll probably have more on this when I react to draft combine numbers, where I react to wingspan, height, standing reach, and all the measurement stuff. But then also I'll take a look at who did best in certain drills and how that could affect their stock. And I'll tie that into the Portland Trailblazers and guys within the draft ranges for their draft picks. As far as combine scrimmages go, normally only players in the back part of the first round to the second round end up participating in these scrimmages. If Leonard Miller plays, I'm very curious to see if he can just dominate. He was at the draft combine last year, played in the G League this year. He's one of my favorite prospects. Unfortunately, Bilal Koulibaly won't play, who's teammates with Victor Wanbanyama. His season is still going on. That was a guy that I wanted to see play against some players that I'm more familiar with. Right now, he's mocked in the early second round. Brandon Pozimski, I don't know if I said his name right, but he's a big guard out of Santa Clara who has gotten some draft buzz. Obviously, playing at Santa Clara, the WCC isn't the best conference, so I'm curious to see how he looks in combine scrimmages against some better competition and with some better players next to him because he's an intriguing playmaker who could look better with better talent around him, and he's a guy that I could see moving up draft boards into the first round. Amari Bailey, if he sticks in the draft, I'm curious to see how he does. He was a guy who was a projected top 10 pick hanging into this year, but did not have the freshman season that many people envisioned of him. However, he came on strong late in the season. After UCLA dealt with some injuries, he started to show a lot of the promise that was expected of him heading into this past college season, so that's a guy to watch out for as well. Imani Bailey, if he plays he's just a lights out scorer was the number one prospect in his class at one time but just doesn't have the wingspan or the athleticism to really make that sort of impact on the NBA level but he brings entertainment value he's currently uh, projected late in the second round but the combine is just a great chance to get familiar with certain guys that maybe you weren't able to watch during the college basketball season or maybe haven't done some research on and it's always interesting to react to that to see who played the best during the draft combine combine because there has been risers in the past that have risen into the late first round because they played really well in the draft combine and then ended up outplaying that draft stock. Kyle Kuzma is a prime example of that. He tore up draft combine scrimmages, ended up being the 27th pick in that draft, and I think that was 2017, and then has turned himself into a really solid NBA player. So draft combine scrimmages can show you a bit. Obviously, it's just some scrimmages, so it's not super organized. You can't read too much into them, but depending on what it is, you can take something out of it. So I'll be paying attention to those as well, and I'll let you know who impressed me. Anyway, that's a wrap for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you're looking forward to this draft process as it's fun because the Blazers have a mid-second round pick, the 23rd pick, and then potentially a lottery pick. Of course, picks could get traded, so you never know, but it makes it so that there's prospects in different ranges to pay attention to, and I I love that. So anyway, I'm out of here. I'll catch you next time. Until then, as always, peace out. Go Blazers.